So here we know that God is declaring before his people that he's a jealous God. He's jealous because he, he really wants the good of his people and he knows that what he's prescribed for them will be best. And he's doing it with this, you know, on all of this book of Exodus, we're finding Moses is portrayed as this great intercessor, this one who stands between Israel and God, who's standing in the place pleading for their well-being. And Moses is a very unique man in this Old Testament scenario. I mean, he's a unique man in all of history. In, in fact, in chapter 33 of Exodus, a verse we missed there, it says in verse 11, Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man uh, speaks to his friend. You know, and Moses has such a unique place with the Lord. Uh, what, a, what a situation, and, and what a heart. Why does he have a unique place with the Lord? It's because he had the heart of the Lord. He had a heart for mercy, for loving kindness, for compassion. You know, even in the midst of all of this stuff, even though he had his little anger when he threw down the tablet, he was still, after that, again, pleads for this nation. And for, not only for the nation, but Lord, for your own namesake, among all the other nations, that they'll know that you're faithful. And the way they'll know that you're traveling with us, you're with us, Lord, please come with us. And so that's his unique plea. And so God does some things, and as we go on in Exodus 34, he tells them to observe these three annual feasts in Israel to remember the redemptive history uh, that he's brought them through. And it will also, the first one is remembers Passover. Uh, the second one is, the, it's, it's an early harvest, but it's also done at the time of the receiving of the, the uh, commandments on, the Mount, on Mount Sinai. And uh, later on we see, it's called, in the New Testament they call it Pentecost because it was 50 days after the waving of sheep of first fruits in the, in the Passover celebration. It's 50 days after that, 50, Pentecost means 50th, so in the New Testament's just called 50th. And, and it's interesting, in the Old Testament, the law is put, in, is put on tablets at the time, but in the New Testament, the law is written in people's hearts. And then it says uh, that it will appear this third time for a feast of week, uh, ingathering, a feast of uh, tabernacles or feast of booths it's called in different in different times different places in the in the uh, old testament and you gather these three times a year and remember the lord and so uh, moses is up he gets all of this information he's given all of these things he gets these new tablets you know uh, verse 27 of chapter 34 it says then the lord said to moses write down these words for in accordance with these words i have made a covenant with you and with israel so he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. Wow. He did not eat bread or drink water. And you don't try this. Don't try this at home. And he wrote on the tablets of the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Here, he's in a supernatural fast in the presence of the Lord, so much so that the Lord is his sustainer. He doesn't need earthly bread or water. You know, we pretty well know if you go about three days without water, you'll basically you know, die. <laughs> don't, don't try it. They talk about a black fast where you don't drink or eat. And about the farthest you can do that is about three days. And, and you know, and if you don't have good health conditions, probably can't make it that far. Uh, so he's in the supernatural presence of the Lord. I imagine he's having a pretty good time. You know, this is better than what he just went through with Aaron and and the golden calf and all of that and grind. We, we didn't even mention that he ground the calf and the powder and made him drink it. I mean, it was it was a horrible time, but now he's in the presence of the Lord and he's, he doesn't have to eat or drink. You know, uh, just, you know, and we, we consider, in reality, we consider eating and drinking kind of a time of pleasure. But he didn't need that kind of pleasure in the presence of the Lord. He didn't even need the gratification of his physical senses because the presence of the Lord was so strong. It's so strong, it says in verse 29, and it came about when Moses was coming down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets, <laughs> the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hands as he was coming down from the mountain, that Moses did not know what the skin, that the skin on his face shone because of his speaking with him. So Moses is coming down from the mountain. He doesn't know that his face is just glowing. You know, uh, you know he comes down uh, from the mountain. When he gets down there, uh, he's reminded, you know, they said, uh, verse 30, so when Aaron and all the sons of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. I guess so. 
Well, at least they made it this 40 days and 40 nights without building another golden calf, without doing any of that. I, you know, who knows what they were doing, but at least they held out and didn't do anything really, really stupid. Moses comes down and he's been in the presence of the Lord, not eating or drinking for 40 days. If you're not eating or drinking for 40 days, something supernatural is going on. And it's obvious when he gets down, something supernatural has been happening. Signs that, you know, you'll see amazing things that God will do. Well, here's one of them, is that Moses' face is actually just glowing. And so it says in verse 33, uh, well, verse 32, And afterward all the sons of Israel came near, and he commanded them to do everything that the Lord had spoken to him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take off the veil until he came out. Whenever he came out and spoke to the sons of Israel, uh, and whenever he came out and spoke to the sons of Israel, uh, what he had been commanded, the sons of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. So Moses would replace the veil over his face until he went in to speak with him. So the Lord would, so Moses would put this veil over himself when he wasn't speaking to the Lord or he wasn't speaking to the people. When he went in to see the Lord, he took the veil off of his face, spoke to the Lord, and when he came out to speak to the people, he had the veil off of his face, and they, sh they not only heard what he's saying, in fact, it might have been hard to hear what he was saying when you're looking at this guy's face, just a glow. But he, he would speak to them with that glowing face, and then he would cover himself. And it's important to know this because this is re referenced in the New Testament when we get there about uh, you know, the glory that's in this covenant, and then we have a greater covenant that God's given us, and just imagine the glory of that covenant compared to this one, which was fading away, which was which was basically a covenant of death. You know, the commandments didn't give us life. All they did was show that we were sinful people. We can't live up to them. And so this wasn't even a ministry of life. It was actually a ministry of death. You know, don't don't murder, don't steal, don't lie, don't, you know, all these things, don't commit adultery, and all the things that we do, don't, don't uh, covet, you know, all these things that we end up doing. And, and uh, so it was a ministry of, of basically that was leading to people's death and it had glory. And, and so the New Testament would say, well, what greater glory is there in a ministry that's gonna give us life? And the ministry of what Jesus did on the cross, being that sacrifice for us, not only being the great intercessor in, in word and petition, but being the great intercessor becoming an actual sacrifice. And so the picture that we have in Exodus is very important in looking at and establishing for us a foundation as we look at the entire Bible and the message of what Jesus says in the New Testament. So we go through and we, we come through the rest of pretty much the book of Exodus. Coming up to the end is just talking about what happens with the tabernacle and all the things that are within it. A lot of interesting things, a lot of things that could be uh, talked about. But I just want to go to the very end of Exodus and we'll just end uh, this end with Exodus and this this session with these verses in uh, chapter 40, starting with verse 34, it says, Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Uh, I mean, we pass over that real fast, but that was, that was an incredible thing. A cloud covering the tent, and the glory of the Lord fills the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. That's pretty amazing. Moses couldn't go into that. He had been up on the mountain in the glory of God, but here the glory got so strong he can't even enter into the tabernacle. And throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set up. So the cloud would lift and it would go and they would follow the cloud. If the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out until the day that when it was taken up. For throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and there was a fire in it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel. So Israel lived in this continually, continual uh, manifestation of supernatural power and glory. All They would see the tabernacle there, and during the day, the cloud would rest on there. At night, the fire would rest upon it. But any time the cloud got up and moved, then that was time to move. They had to be ready to go at any time and continue their travels. And so that's where we end. The story of Exodus is this story of getting out of Egypt, getting out of the land of sin, getting out there and heading to a new place where God would uh, show his glory in establishing his promise and fulfilling his promise to this whole group of people.